Alrighty YouTubes, you want the best draft guide for Corset 2021? Well look no further. Basically all you need to know is there's a lot of Teferis. Like they're all the same card, but there's a lot of them. There are gold cards that tell you what that color pair is doing. You should always draft good cards, not bad cards. Creatures are important. So are we good? Like is that, is that it? Corset 2021 is done. No, well we need more. Okay, fine. So to make a proper draft guide, I'm going to go through all the removal in the set, the archetypes, I'll rank everything, I'll give you some draft tips, and then of course, I'm going to have some good ranting about cards that are so bad, you should never, ever draft them. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. I'm here to help you in drafting and helping enjoy this awesome set as much as I possibly can. Let's get into it. Starting with removal, first up is white with angelic ascension. It makes a huge problem less huge or makes one of our creatures better. Faith's fetters is all bad for our opponent. Secure the scene, exile something, leaving a token in its place. Legion's judgment works, but needing a target with four power or greater will often limit its effectiveness and it being sorcery speed means I'm not a huge fan of this card. Swift response is probably our best removal option. It only costs two mana and it's an instant answer for any tapped creature. In blue, we really only have Capture Sphere to lock something down once it's in play, but Enthralling Hold is a great pickup because instead of removing the creature, we just steal it. Although it does have to be tapped, which can be a pain. Ugh. And since it's blue, we should look at counter spells, which would bring in Cancel, Lofty Denial, which is harder to deny if we have a flyer in play, Rewind, and Miscast. But Miscast is terrible. Don't play it. And yeah, we have some tempo and tricks with Unsubstantiate, Rookie Mistake, and Frost Breath to get tempo on our side and tell our opponents to slow down. Blue has more counter spells than we've seen in Akoria or Theros Beyond Death, so expect some instant speed shenanigans whenever you're against this color. In black, we have card in hand removal with Duress, Mind Rot, and Kite Sail Freebooter. Duress is a card I will not play. It is an awful top deck, it doesn't hit creatures, it's just not good. Then Mind Rot is a Feast or Famine type of card, but more playable even though it's an awful top deck as well. Thankfully, Kite Sail Freebooter is just a solid 1-2 flyer for 2 mana that also hopefully stalls our opponent's removal plans or commands premium removal. You should always play this card. Then once our opponent's creature is on the board, we got Eliminate, Finishing Blow, which also takes care of Planeswalkers, and Grasp of Darkness as our instant speed removal options. Pestilent Haze can remove all the tiny creatures at sorcery speed, or help you finish off a Planeswalker as well. Last for black, we have creature removal on creatures. So Massacre Worm and Skeleton Archer are here to do work. A little combo to keep in mind is you can use Alchemist Gift to give Skeleton Archer Death Touch and then Skeleton Archer will blow up whatever you ping with it. If you're playing on Arena, make sure to go into full control mode to ensure you don't get too ahead of yourself and miss the combo. Now in red, we have a couple mutual destruction creatures, Goblin Arsonist, Pitchburn Devils, and Heartfire Immolator help do damage to other stuff when they go kaboom. For instant speed spells, we have Scorching Dragonfire, Shock, and Soul Seer, with all of these being able to hit Planeswalkers as well. Then there's Turn to Slag, which destroys all equipment attached to the creature, even if we don't take it out. And there's also this card, Transmorgify, which exiles something and replaces it with something else, but I would not play this either, it's just too risky. I really like Volcanic Geyser as a mana dump, do lots of damage at instant speed type of spell. Volcanic Salvo is a mid to late game dual removal card, which is also very good. And lastly, our shrine can ping other creatures or planeswalkers, but you won't find me playing it on its own. Finally, we have green, which has as much protection from removal as it has removal. Hunter's Edge, Primal Might, and Run Afoul help us remove stuff, but I wouldn't play Run Afoul in a best of one deck because it only hits flyers. Fungal Rebirth gets us a permanent back from our graveyard to our hand and potentially brings along some sapperling tokens too, so I look to this as pseudo protection. Heroic Intervention and Ranger's Guile can protect what we have so we don't have to actually dig them up. Oh, and Meteorite crashes in to deal 2 damage to any target with its great flavor text. It also provides mana fixing, so that's pretty nifty. I rank the individual colors as red, black, blue, white, and then green. Red has the best balance of creatures in removal, black a very close second, blue falls to third but is still a very solid color, and white and green, though I don't see them as particularly weak in this set, are just not as strong as their peers because of the lack of interaction. Now for the archetypes, which I've broken down into good, better, best, because I do not think any are terrible, but some are harder to pull off or require their main payoffs to stick around in order to get ahead. Starting with the good archetypes in no particular order, we have white-green, and it is focused on 1-1 counters. 
I want to pull this all the way to the top tier because I like strategies focused on going wide or building up stuff to be unstoppable, but there isn't much go wide support in the set and if we lose our synergy pieces, well, we lose. Then there's white black and it is lower tier because even though it is the best equipped to deal with aggro because of the lifelink, consistently gaining three and having your payoffs around is not going to be easy in this set. Regardless, I see me forcing this R-type a lot because I just can't help myself, I really like vampires. And lastly, white red is a color pair that can struggle to get going because there's so much low cost, high toughness creatures in the set. If the game slows down, our smaller creatures may simply become ineffective. What saves us is some of our bombs win the game for us in a couple turns. So if we can end a draft with a dragon or angel buddy and snag some of the great removal in red, then we can hang with anyone. Now onto the better archetypes, starting with red green. Having creatures that can break through stalls is a must and both red and green give us options here, plus the ability to protect our bombs and deal with flying creatures gives us access to all the answers we'll hopefully need. Then we have Blue Black with Obsessive Stitcher willing to sacrifice herself to bring back a bomb and make sure it makes it onto the battlefield. Black brings the cheap removal, Blue brings the really good top end, and together I just really like this color combo and the fun, creative things they can do to close out a game. Black Green getting value from stuff dying is just really good, but this color pair may struggle to find its pieces since the mono color cards you're looking for work rather well in multiple archetypes, so not finding this lane soon enough could lead you to an underpowered build. Now for the top color pairs, the best of the best are Blue White Flyers. This pair struggles for flat out removal, but our early plays are great blockers and become great attackers. And call me crazy, but I've enjoyed having a couple copies of Warded Battlements in this deck if we cannot find suitable flyers. A low curve, a couple removal spells, and we should be able to close out any game. Blue Red Spells Matter is a personal favorite because it utilizes prowess, which is always strong and limited. It turns our instants like opt or shock into pseudo removal tricks and helps our creatures get in for some surprise damage. So it's, it's good, it's very good. Then we have blue green, which is very strong as well because drawing cards is strong and limited and getting to do that more with payoffs is top tier good. And I just have to say, Ward of the Woods is amazing. Unless you're playing against it, then it will be the bane of your existence. But this color combo has big bodies, trample, flying, whatever you need, it'll find you an answer. And we'll end with black red simply because this color pairing has too much removal and too many strong plays at the common and uncommon rarity. So even as this color pairing tends to be more aggressive of an archetype, it can find multiple ways to win through its sheer card quality and ways to get ahead on board to get in for those final points of damage. Oh, and I almost forgot another archetype. The most fun archetype in M21 is Shrines. They are back and if you want to draft it, I'd say focus on green as a main color to get what little mana fixing there is in the set. And then when you're ready, Shrine on. Do I think it is a consistent winning game plan? Absolutely not. But I do think it is a phenomenal accomplishment to pull off and you should consider any amount of wins an incredible success. It should be on your resume, any social media platform descriptions you have, congratulations. So here's my complete rankings of our dual color combos and something to keep in mind is splashing is not as easy in the set because a lack of mana fixing and many bombs having dual colored mana in their casting cost. Also, aggro is a bit harder to pull off due to low CMC high toughness creatures and core sets are often creature focused. So finding that lane, having removal and ways to break through for damage will be essential to a successful draft. And now it's time to bring it full circle. So the next time we sit down to draft, whether it's in arena or in paper, we're ready to hit the ground running. So the first tip is when in doubt, grab removal. If you don't have a clear bomb rare or a slam dunk pick and you're kind of between some creatures and removal, I would say lean into removal, especially if it's in those top colors like red or black. Then when playing, make sure you're using that removal to deal with something significant, whether it's a bomb or it's one of those synergy pieces of your opponent, don't use it to simply get rid of some inconvenience because you can rest assured something bigger is coming. The second tip, when torn between two or three cards in the same pack, assuming none of those are the only one in the colors you're drafting or hitting a hole in your deck build that you need, if they're all rather playable, you don't know which one to grab, pick the lower costed one because you want to make sure you have a fairly low curve, a lot of two and three drops in your final build. Having those strong two and three drops helps you consistently curve out so that you can apply pressure to those that did play a greedier deck or pump the brakes on those that are playing aggro to let you get to your bombs and then take over the game. Third, this one's pretty tough to do, but just try and find your lane as quickly as possible. Don't try and find a way to force your early picks. When drafting, having better card quality will lead to more wins than those essentially coin flip games where if you don't find your bomb, you're just dead in the water. And lastly, if you don't have removal, which can certainly happen, it dries up, people are in the same colors, you need a way to break through the stall and combat tricks are a fantastic way to do that. 
Of course, you want to be mindful that you don't get blown out by some instant speed removal, but if you don't have enough removal in your deck, you're going to have to have combat tricks because it's really your only way to essentially combat what your opponent's doing and turn your creatures at least into some pseudo removal spells. Okay, now it's time for some ranting, and I am excited about this. But if I don't hit on a card that you think is just completely unplayable, let me know in the comments. Would love to hear your rants there. But now it's time to tell you what you should never, ever draft in this set. First up is Azusa Lost But Seeking, because you will be lost looking for wins when you figure out that when you play her, she does really nothing to help your game plan. What you should be doing is sleeving her up and then waiting for when you're building a commander deck after the draft. Or if you're playing on Arena, congrats, you saved yourself a wild card, but she should not show up in your final build, period. There is one caveat to that though, and that is playing her with Rada does work fairly well because Rada is just, she's impressed me immensely in this set. But you don't wanna play one card that's terrible just because it's pretty good with another card. You should not play cards that are only good in very specific situations. If you, I guess if you wanna win, you shouldn't do that. That's just not, a winning game plan, don't play Azusa. And you may be thinking, I'll draft this card or that card, what's the worst that could happen? Life will go on. If you draft this card, it's not gonna go on. You're gonna lose, because you're thinking, well, in this one in a thousand instance, it's gonna be the perfect card. And we don't draft cards to win us one in a thousand games. We draft cards to win more than that, at least three in a thousand. Do not draft this card, it's simply a waste. It gains you some life, great, just don't play it. Then there's discontinuity, and you should just discontinue drafting if you draft this card, because again, it's great as a wild card or maybe some fun build, not in draft. You do not think, but what if, and then you jam that card in your deck, that's how you build a subpar deck. Don't do it, please don't draft this card. Then there's Necromentia, because it's like it gets rid of every copy of that card. Maybe in a best of three, maybe, like barely maybe, in a best of one, this card is unplayable and constructed. Sure, it's fine. Who cares? We're talking about draft here. This card is awful. Then there's Peer into the Abyss. And you may be thinking, well, Teferi's Tutelage, this combo, it's too good to pass up. And I'm just gonna say you sound like, well, I guess me drafting up a pretty cool commander deck, but that's that's not what we're doing here. We're playing limited, get out of here with that. And then there's Nine Lives, which actually it's not the worst card, but it's just not good because it's only good in certain situations. And often when you're behind, which is again, not where you wanna draft or put cards in your build, in the, just for specific situations like that. That's how you end up with wasted cards, dead cards in hand that aren't doing anything and you lose games because of it. Don't play this card unless you have some type of strategy in mind. Just don't do it. All right, no more ranting. I mean, here are cards that you should always play because they're just always good. If you're in these colors, you should play these cards. I'm just a big fan of them. There you go. There's some positivity to end the video with, just really solid cards. That's the draft guide. Good luck with your drafts. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. If you like the video, like the video. Subscribe, we're gonna be putting out a lot more draft content if you're interested in that. And of course, if you're looking to draft some cards, pick up some boxes from Card Kingdom. Use my affiliate link. They sponsor the channel. I'm a huge fan of them. Great customer service. And thank you to my patrons. Y'all are the best. I cannot say it enough. If you wanna become a patron, help the channel out, you should do that. Just want you to know that my patrons are the best on YouTube. So it's like, sorry, other content creators. I'm just sorry my patrons are the best. I don't know, I don't know what to say, sorry. I don't make the rules, you know what I mean? But thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. I hope this video helps you out. And again, if you have any questions, I'm here to help. We'll see you in the next video. Take it easy, peace.